everyone. Welcome to another episode of The O Show. I'm O and I'm here for your amusement. And today, we're going to talk about the 2024 release of the movie, Imaginary. <laughs> okay, you guys, look. So, I remember when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was super excited, right? And if I'm not mistaken, I feel like there's, if not two, there's like three Imaginary Friends, including this one. Uh, imaginary friends movies that are coming out this year. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be as nice as I can about this movie. I really want to see this movie, and I went to a eleven o'clock showing of this movie. And first of all. <laughs> when did matinee prices get so high? I don't understand. That's number one. Number two, this is the first time this has ever happened to me, right? I didn't scroll down to see that this movie was in two separate like theater rooms at the movie place I went to. <laughs> I didn't realize I bought a ticket for like the closed captioning. So everything in this movie, <laughs> there were subtitles at the bottom. Like, you know, so-and-so is breathing. The floor is creaking. And then, of course, the dialogue is all spelled out at the bottom. Like, one of my friends and like one of my brothers used to always make fun of me because it's not that I, okay, <laughs> like, I wrote a book and published it, like, years ago, right? But I don't like to read. Like, I, I can't sit down and read a book. Somehow I wrote one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like to read. But when I see shit on TV that I have to read because it's foreign, it, you know, it's coming to... Like, Parasite. Let's, say, let's use Parasite as an example. I love the movie Parasite. But, you know, you have to read it if you don't speak the language. My problem with it is, especially with the movie with Parasite, like it's, it's kind of horror, it's kind of thrilling, it's kind of suspense, whatever. I don't like my eyes down here <laughs> reading the words and shit's happening. Like, so it could be peeping around a corner, but I won't see it because I'm reading the dialogue at the bottom. So sometimes I have to watch things like twice, just kind of like look around and see what did I miss the first time while I was reading. So... <laughs> so I didn't realize I bought a ticket. I had to actually go back while the movie was playing and be like, what the hell ticket did I buy? And sure enough, it said, like, it's closed captioned. And I was like, shit, I, didn't, I just wanted to be in and out early so I could live the rest of my day. So, yeah, so that happened. So that was super distracting <laughs> because as people are talking and doing things, I kept looking down and looking at the words. I was like, oh, wait, no, I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and I look back up. So that was number one. So already I'm like, oh no, this is not going to be a good movie watch. <laughs> okay. And like, so what number am I on? Number three. Um, Y'all, this movie was like, ugh, it's, all, it's all over the place. <laughs> oh my God. Super side note too. So I will share with y'all because I trust you. You trust me, right? So I'll be honest. <laughs> Back in the 80s when I was growing up, I don't remember how old I was. I, it was under eight. I know that for a fact. So I might have been like, I don't know, five, six, seven, maybe. And there was a period of time where there were some movies and TV shows that were coming out where a young kid would have an imaginary friend. <laughs> and I was the only child with my parents until I was age eight. So I had a lot of years to like figure shit out, right? But there was, uh, and I was really, I, I had no problem being the only child. Like, meaning, meaning, I wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so lonely. No, I was fine in my room. Like, <laughs> I had my little imaginary, uh, you know, with my toy, imaginary issues with my toys and I had TV, video games, and movies. So, you know, I was fine. 
But there was this period where, like, I was seeing imaginary friends on TV, and I was like, should I have an imaginary friend? And I swear, it must it must have lasted like three days. It was it, tops, tops. Because I do remember thinking to myself, like, okay, I'm going to have an imaginary friend. He's going to look like this. He's going to look like this. He's going to look like this. And we're going to talk, and we're going to play. And I learned quick that you can't do that in a black household. <laughs> because I think one day my mom ordered pizza, and I was like, Okay, well, this pizza's for me, but I'm going to need, like, a couple of piece, more pizzas for my imaginary friend. And my mom was like, well, I ain't got no money for your imaginary friend, and blah, blah, blah. And she went through this whole thing, and I was like, someone's going to starve. I'm not going to starve. But if my imaginary friend wants pizza and my mom is not going to give me two plates... <laughs> My imaginary friend is not going to survive in this black household. So, I learned quick, like, this is really hard. <laughs> it's not, it's probably not a good idea to have an imaginary friend. And I just, I abandoned that whole idea. Like, it was, it was super stupid. Okay, but, y'all, so we are here to talk about this movie right here. And, it's, 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 ugh, there's, ugh. I don't even know where to begin. It's all over the place. <laughs> okay, so we have LaWanda... No, DeWanda White. I keep wanting to say LaWanda, like LaWanda Page from Sanford and Son. <laughs> but no, her name is DeWanda Wise. Okay. And she plays Jessica. And Jessica is married to a white dude. I think his name is Max or something. And, by the way... I'm looking at the husband. I'm like, God, I know him from somewhere. Where the hell do I know this guy from? So if you are a uh, The Walking Dead fan, he played the character of Jesus. And it was Jesus, right? It was a Jesus. So I'm pretty sure it was Jesus. And I feel like this is when the show was like going downhill. <laughs> so anyway, I had to like figure that out because it was driving me crazy. So anyway, they're married and... Uh, the father has two daughters, an older one and a younger one, from an ex-wife. And we're like, okay. I don't know where the ex-wife is at. So, they move, and they end up moving into DeWanda, whose character is Jessica. I'll just say Jessica. Jessica's childhood home. She has not been in this home since she was like five. She was living with her father... And um, somewhere down the line, like, her mother died of cancer. So I guess it was, like, her and her father. And apparently the father was abusive to her. And they took her out of the home, and she lived with her grandmother. And I guess the father was still there because we learned later that he was on the porch reading books that she published because she grows up and becomes, like, a children's book author. Right? Okay. Okay. So... They're moving in. You got an older daughter. You got a younger daughter. And let me just say, like, the younger daughter who plays Alice, her name is Piper or somebody. I don't remember her last name. But this girl is really good. I can't wait to, like, watch her in other future movies or, like, if she gets older, like, as a teenager, dealing with teenage things because she did a really good job in this movie. So I feel like her career is going to be, like, okay, right? But as for like the the older daughter, she of course has to be the teenager who's all like, Ugh, I don't like you. Ugh, I'm so bad at the world. Ugh, you're not my mother. Because we always have to have a goddamn teenager. A teenage girl. Um, so, so anyway, they move in and uh, the young girl, Alice, she finds, she goes into the basement one day after they're playing like hide and seek. And she finds a teddy bear behind a wall, a, a door, or whatever. It's in the basement, which is already, like, red flag number one. So, so, she finds this teddy bear, and his name is Chauncey, and the thing is talking to her. And then, just like every other, like, imaginary friend movie, like, I don't understand kids who are, you're not three. You're, <laughs> this kid is obviously, like, nine, ten, something, and then 
you find a teddy bear that starts talking to you, and you're like, okay, I'm your new friend. No, I need to be like, I need you to be like, ah, to talk a teddy bear. But no, that's not what she does. She embraces this thing, and then well, they're friends to the end. So, <laughs> it takes so long for shit to happen in this movie. But what's really funny is that when the when the girl is talking to the teddy bear in her room, Jessica, the mom, the stepmom, can hear her in a vent in her bathroom. So I'm I'm, a, I'm assuming the master bedroom has a master bathroom because she's always in there, or whatever. So I'm like, okay. I don't think it's a communal bathroom. <laughs> Unless it is, I don't know. But the vent's on the top, like the ceiling. So that tells me that Alice's room is above their bathroom. Because when you see her bedroom, I can't find a vent. Where's the vent? <laughs> and, and she's not talking super loud. There are times that she's talking soft. And they can still hear her. However, I don't understand the science that's happening in this house. Because when when the mom is like, talking to the husband, like, oh, she's upstairs talking to Chauncey. Why doesn't she hear them talking? So Alice never hears them talking in the bathroom. But they can hear Alice talking in the bathroom. And then, then I get distracted because now the Orpheus in me is like, well, when she's like 16 talking to her boyfriend on the phone, because, you know, kids today be 16 and all that other shit. If she's talking, or maybe she's talking shit about her sister. I don't know. Just shit. Gossip, right? The bathroom of the Paris is like the gossip hub because you can hear everything she's saying. So when she becomes an adult and she's talking on the phone, So there's somewhere down the line, like, as Jessica is walking through the house and multiple times walks to this girl's door, you can hear the floor creaking and making all this noise. And she's not quiet. It's an old house. So every time she takes a, a step, you hear it. <laughs> and then at one point, she's, like, outside Alice's room talking to herself, well, she, okay, so she's filming Jessica having a tea party. And she's doing it to show her husband, who's not there, because why is, why would the father be there in horror movies? It's always the mom, like, experiencing all this stupid shit. So she's like, ooh, look, Alice is having a tea party, blah, blah. She's literally outside the door saying this. <laughs> but Alice doesn't hear it. I don't understand. But at that this particular scene, um, there is a, a big jump scare because this lady attacks uh, Jessica in the hallway. And then we find out it's the two kids' mom. So the oldest daughter has been texting the mom saying like, oh, you, you seem like you're fine. Well, we just moved to the new address. And here's the address because how else would this bitch know the address? So the mother comes... And has to then be escorted by ambulance out. So I guess she's crazy. But then the mom kind of returns at the end. When we are in this imaginary land. We'll get there. We'll talk about it. But at the end of the day. like I feel like we didn't need this mom character. Like The mom could have been. I mean all movies kill off a parent. We could have just said the mom was dead. <laughs> or, or, if we didn't have to say she's dead, we could just be like, well, you know, she's locked up because she's fucking crazy as hell. So I don't understand the character of the mom. Because did she, like, escape from somewhere? Is this, which is why she's being taken by an ambulance? Because why, why is she taken by an ambulance? She was taken by an ambulance, right? She wasn't taken by the cops. Or was she? I don't know. It's stupid. It's stupid because we never hear from her ever again. So, I don't know. It's dumb. So, <laughs> then you have this, like, dumb teenage boy who lives, like, next door. I think his name was Liam. 
And then at one point, Jessica leaves to go visit her father in a old folks home or something. Hold that thought. So this boy next door, who's like the most, uh, at one point comes over to the house and he's just like restless and everything. Like, sit your ass down. Like you, <laughs> he, this is the first time you're coming over to our house. You were just all up, walking around and touching alcohol and, and spilling and making mess. And then, and she, so he spills, he breaks, he spills a bottle. He, he drops a bottle of alcohol. And the daughter's like, oh my God, look what you did. You suck. Go upstairs to the bathroom and get some towel. Then he goes, okay. And he goes upstairs. Like, <laughs> one, does he know where the bathroom is? Number two, does he know where the towels are? Where are the towels are in a linen closet? Because this house looks like it has a linen closet. And then he goes to the bathroom and shit's happening. And then he just wipes his, like, pissy hands on one of the towels he was going to bring downstairs. But then doesn't bring anything with him. He just leaves the bathroom with no towels. So... <laughs> But then he gets attacked by this bear, right, that you see in the trailer. The bear is in the hallway, is messing with him, and then it scares him, and then... <laughs> I hate this kid so much. And then he's, like, parading this bag around with pills, and I guess everyone assumes it's Molly, but it's not Molly. It's like his mom's, like, allergy medicine or something, like... <sighs> okay, okay. Okay, white kids in suburban whatever town they live in. <laughs> and then the last character we are introduced to is this old lady who lives somewhere. We don't even know where she lives. But her name is Gloria. And you know who she is? <laughs> Have you seen the movie The Happening? <laughs> Mark Wahlberg goes to this lady's house and then she's all like, are you guys going to kill me in my sleep? And Mark Wahlberg's like, no. What? No. <laughs> no. I hear you whispering. Planning on stealing something. No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> so anyway, she plays this lady named Gloria. And apparently, she used to be Jessica's babysitter a long time ago when she was five. And she witnesses Jessica going through this imaginary door and getting trapped in there. And getting... And wait. And coming... God damn it, I don't remember. Anyway, it's stupid. <laughs> so here's my thing. The movie starts off with Jessica having dreams about a Spider-Man, right? And not our neighbor, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's this uh, Spider-Man who seems to be the character in her children's books. But she's dreaming about it. And they even show the, the creature who's like a man in a... <laughs> A man in a horrible spider outfit costume thing. I don't know, stupid. But I feel like we don't need that. We don't need this. Okay, if you're a children's author and this is your character, like, okay, fine, whatever, whatever. But this old lady is taking so much of our time, my valuable time, to just explain stuff. Explain. She has to explain and explain. And she's explaining. And she's explaining, and then she explains some more, okay? <laughs> so I, I feel like instead of explaining just all this, just shut fuck up. <laughs> they should have, okay, there's, there's a couple flashbacks of when Jessica was a little girl, okay? If you're going to do flashbacks, show us, like, the shit with the door and the, and the lady and, oh, my God, like, what happened? And, oh, she's gone. Oh, I'm so fucked up in the head now. Like, you know, they could have, they could have, everything she was explaining, they probably could have just filmed a scene that we could have watched and then be like, oh, okay. But they don't in this movie. So it's just this old lady going, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, then what happens after that? Hold on, let me think. Okay. So, the imaginary friend who is a bear named Chauncey. Don't even say that because I don't know. Like, who cares? <sighs> Chauncey the bear wants little Alice to do a fun scavenger hunt. <laughs> so, she has to find something that's happy. She has to find something that makes her sad. She has to find something that, like, gets her in trouble. She has to find something, 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 something. And, like, the last thing is, like, you have to do something that, like, you have to hurt yourself. So, of course, she does it because, you know, I don't even know, like, how old she is. And she has nothing else to do these days of doing this. She's going through the, the scavenger hunt. And she's she's checking, checking the box, checking the box, checking the box. And then we get to this one point where it says, like, hurt yourself. And she gets this board out. And she's about to slap her hand on it. But then Jess Jessica starts figuring some shit out and and uh, stops her just in the nick of time. So she kind of does scrape herself. Um, but one thing, too. Alice has, like, this, so, like I guess, burn marks on her arm. And Jessica has, like, marks on her arm, too. But the marks for Jessica are explained. There's something from her childhood, which we do learn about. Alice, though, the little girl, even though she's about to do something with her hand and get another issue, like, <laughs> on her arm, they never explain why Alice's arms are fucked up, which you're supposed to, I guess, assume is from some kind of fire, but what? Because Alice is afraid of, like, fire but I guess like whoever directed this forgot that so you're like so what's up with her arm like what is it and they don't explain it which is dumb uh, anyway so the whole point of the movie is that okay you know what yeah I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fast forward so look this, this is what's happening you guys <laughs> When Jessica was a little girl, she had an imaginary friend named Chauncey. And I guess, like, the full name of Chauncey was CB. Well, she, I, well, I guess she called it CB, but it was Cha Chauncey Bear. So, you don't put that together until later, because you see CB. You're like, CB? Because she's writing, like, S-E-E-B-E-E. -E -E -E. But really, it is a, it's really CB for Chauncey Bear. <laughs> And then he tried to get her to go to this this place called Never Ever, I think. Is that the name of the place? But anyway, he wants her to go to his world. So he's trying to get her to do shit. And once she completes that shit, which she did, she can go to like his realm, world, something stupid. And uh, I guess she escaped it. By the help of her father. Which is why people were like. Well you abused this girl. And we're going to take her away from you. And now we know why. Because he saved her. From this never ever place. But. He looked into the eyes. Of the thing. Is this thing a demon? Is it a. I don't, and this thing has like TV for eyes. Like. <laughs> If you look into the eyes of this thing, it shows you the nightmares and dreams or whatever of all the children of the world. And then it fucks you up. So I don't understand why there's not a hospital full of these people. Like, is he the only one? Why is there not a news story of, or a, a news clipping or report about all these people with fucked up eyes? Because, because their, their kids had imaginary friends. But anyway, we're not we're not supposed to think about that. So, uh, she moved away, and I guess this thing was like, "How dare you? I'm just gonna stay in this house until you come back." So the father, I guess, was living there because Gloria was like, "Well, your father has been reading all your books." At a period of time, like he'll be on the porch reading your books, which means he had to be sane after all these years until she got into an adult or whenever she started publishing these books because she has like 
five or six, I assume, because at one point he has like a stack of books at his hosp like next to his hospital bed. Which why is that? I don't understand why he has all these books in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> or the assistant living home, or where, wherever he's living at. Like, why are all these books here? <laughs> so when did that happen? It's not explained. Uh, shocker. So <laughs> that's not explained. Ugh. So Alice completes her task. She goes to this never ever, and she disappears. Now. Before all this, the gag of it all. <laughs> okay, this is this is the gag of this whole movie. <laughs> Jessica gets the a therapist to come to the house and do a session with Alice. Alice is like, I want to bring Chauncey in, and she's like, Yeah, okay, whatever. So, Alice comes out, gets the bear, which Jessica sees, because she's in the kitchen, like, washing dishes. And they had the session with the therapist, and, it's, and then at one point, Alice turns around and starts talking to Chauncey, and like, why did you do all this and say all this? And then, I don't want to be your friend no more. And Chauncey's like, bitch, like, you're going to be my friend. And she goes, no, I don't want to be your friend. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway, she's She's going back and forth with this bear. And then at one point... Okay, so you hear Alice talking to the bear. And then when the bear is supposed to be responding back, it's Alice's voice. So us as the audience and then the therapist, we think, oh, it's Alice saying what Chauncey is saying. You know, so she's like, Chauncey, why are you so mean? And then, he, and then she goes... Because, like, I want to be your friend. Well, you're not my friend. Well, I want to be your friend. But you're not my friend. You know, it's one of those stupid conversations. But at one point, she turns her head, and then you hear her voice, but she's not talking because it's supposed to be Chauncey talking, right? See? And so, us as an audience are supposed to be like, ooh, no, what's happening? <laughs> and turns out, Chauncey the bear has never been there the whole time. So it's the bear only being seen by Alice and Jessica, which doesn't explain why there was a bear under towels tormenting that Liam kid from next door. Unless he's supposed to see the bear. But... They don't. He doesn't see the bear. Bear. The bear is always covered in a towel, and all of a sudden, I guess Alice's blanket at one point. And then when it turns to that big, huge bear that you see in the trailer, like, <laughs> okay, y'all. Then they go into this like, so, so Alice disappears, and it's so funny because like this little white girl is missing, and then. <laughs> They're like, the cops are called, and there's like one police car <laughs> I driving away, who I guess is supposed to be looking for Alice. And they're like, oh, the police is looking for her. And then, you know, the teenage daughter, who still has an attitude, is like, oh, Jessica, this is all your fault. I'm going to look at my sister. I don't understand how there's a little white girl missing. And like, no one else in the neighborhood is looking for her, number one. And number two... What is this town that only has, like, one police car? Like, there should be, like, officers running all over this neighborhood looking for this girl. But there's not. <laughs> so, I don't understand the judicial system of this town. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> all right, y'all. So, eh, Lord Jesus. This, oh, I can't. <laughs> Fast forward. So, anyway... Jessica realizes what's happening because, you know, that Gloria lady who's tells uh, the older daughter, what's her name? I don't remember her name because who cares? She tells the older daughter, like, all this stuff. And she realizes, like, oh, my God, like, what Jessica is saying is true. You used to have an imaginary friend, and now Alice has the same imaginary friend, and he's trying to get Alice, whatever. So, 
they all come to the house, and now the three women, it's like girl power now. They figure the shit out, and Jessica's like, oh my god, the, the scavenger hunt that Alice had to do is the same thing my imaginary friend did with me, and we have to redo it, and then once I redo it, I could go into like this never ever place. So they do, and they find they, they she figures out how to complete it, and because there's one thing she didn't do, and she tells the daughter off, which is really funny. Which, by the way, I, and that drove me crazy too. You mean to tell me you got this black stepmother, and this teenage daughter is just always snapping at her, being disrespectful. The white father is always like, oh, you know. Just, don't worry about it. Like, no, no. You mean to tell me this black mother is not? Bitch, you are in my house. Like, I am married to your father. You are going to respect me. And she never does. And how long were they married for? They're, they're obviously married, which means they dated, got engaged. They are married. And somewhere down the line, they moved to, like, her childhood home. I feel like there have been some years now in between <laughs> that this daughter should have just left that shit at the door. <laughs> so, I don't understand why she's still bad. But anyway, we're not supposed to think about that because it's a movie. So, they... <sighs> They go into the never, ever, never, ever, never, never, ever, ever. Remember that song from, is it from the Footloose soundtrack? No, never, ever, ever. Okay, so anyway, look. They go into the never, ever thing, right? And then I'm distracted because, is this not the Beetlejuice set? Do you remember Beetlejuice where, um... Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin die and <laughs> they go to be Juno and stuff. And they're walking through like a checkerboard place with doors all around. And it's blue. Uh, so our imaginary world is the same hallway as the recently deceased. I swear that's what. It, am I wrong? That's what this shit looks like. Like. <laughs> if you see this movie. This is literally where they are. They are in the fucking. Recently deceased hallway. To meet their caseworker. If, we, if he just died. Oh my god. So okay. This review. This is. It's, this I've, I've been talking too long. So anyway. <sighs> Chauncey the bear is like a bear, which is a stupid bear, which doesn't do anything. But he does kill Gloria, so Gloria dies. So I'm curious to see if any of the neighbors realize this lady's gone <laughs> because now she's missing. So now it's a whole like we got to get Alice out and. Uh, but they're in the land of, like, imaginary. Why are they I, I thought it was going to turn to, like, Children of the Corn. And I was like, little white kids going to, like, run out and stuff. Like, I, I was, like, the whole time, like, oh, my God, it's going to get scary because all these kids who have disappeared. And, and, rewind, rewind. When we talk, back to the therapist lady, right? <laughs> at one point, she talks to Jessica. She's like, look at this video of this kid. I, you know, one of my cases from back in the day. And she's showing a video, and she's talking about this, this kid's, like, issues. Is that not a HIPAA violation? <laughs> you are talking about your client's information to someone who's not even your patient. And I, I need your license sent to me right now because <laughs> that, is, that is such a HIPAA, a HIPAA issue, ma'am. But, oh, my God. So, anyway, we try to get... Alice out, and they think they do, and so you're like, oh, is the movie over? Because that's dumb. But, it's not, because it's a twist. They're still there. Well, she is. Jessica. And so, you're like, oh, okay. And then, she gets out, and you're like, oh, maybe it's over now. But it's not, because it's a twist. And then, she gets out again. And so, <laughs> this movie won't end. This movie will not end. And so, she gets out for the third time. 
And Alice, like, burns the demon thing, which is, like, the stupidest demon. You know, these are, like, the worst, like, final bosses of any movie I've ever seen. Like, ever. I, like, the demon in Annabelle was, like, better than <laughs> this demon. Because I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck is happening with this demon. <sighs> so, okay, hold on. <laughs> so, look, y'all. Alice, like, burns this thing. And they're in the basement. And they're all like, okay, we got to get out, right? So all of them get out of the house. Uh, I'm sure it only took them like less than a minute to get out from the basement to the outside. And in that time, from the basement, this house is engulfed in flames. To the point where the roof is collapsing. <laughs> this house built with like popsicle sticks? Like, why is the house burning so quick? The fire should just be, like, in the basement right now. Maybe in a room uh, in the on the first floor. I don't, know, I don't know where the basement door is at. But, it is, like, literally burning the second floor and the roof. And not only that, they get outside, and there's a fire truck coming down the street. There's neighbors coming out, being you know, you know how neighbors are when, you know, shit's happening. Who called the fire department? Why is the fire department already there? Were they alerted that two little white girls were coming out of the house? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Why is the fire department already here? You just left the house. <laughs> and all these nosy-ass neighbors coming outside to see what's happening. Where were you when Alice was missing a couple days ago or a day ago? Or, I don't know. But where were you? Okay. Everyone... The cops have been knocking on everyone's door going, Do you did you see this girl? Have you seen this girl? She's missing. No, they're all asleep in their, hom their homes. So, <laughs> and then the movie ends with the three girls, because the father is still on tour trying to make money, because why do we need the father around? But the mom and the two daughters, are they're now trying to find like a hotel to stay in, and they end up leaving one hotel because there's a little boy in there with a teddy bear and he's like oh my my imaginary friend is hungry or he says something about the imaginary friend and they're like oh yeah let's go to another hotel because we're not going to deal with this shit again and they all agree and they leave but the house is burned down i'm sure jessica's purse and credit cards were in the house so how are they paying for like a hotel y'all I tried. I tried to have a positive attitude with this movie. <laughs> I tried. I tried it. I tried. And I said, okay. Okay. Maybe it could be like a cult classic. I don't know. I don't know if it can be. Because there's, there's so much going on that didn't need to go on. <laughs> so, y'all. So, anyway. Oh, I'm I'm still going. <laughs> because you know what? I'm gonna give this movie one shot. Okay? That movie can keep that shot right there. Only because I kinda like this Dewanda Weiss, right? She's been in some things, but I didn't really, like, notice her until she was in Jurassic Park Dominion. Only because that movie was horrible. But I liked her role. And I was like, oh, who's this chick? <laughs> because this movie's dead to me already. I don't fucking care anymore. Because Jurassic Park just needed to stop. And so that's I that's what I remember her from. I know she's from something else too. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. But um I liked her, but as I said earlier, I like the girl to play Alice. She's a really I, I she's really good. I liked I liked her performance in this. Like there were times she was like Ooh. like at the beginning when she was all like Ooh. 
I would have been like, ah, oh, let me give you a hug. I'm, I'm sorry, little girl. Are you scared? <laughs> um, yeah, you guys. Oh, my God. This movie was just... Yeah. God damn it. I paid money for this shit. <sighs> Alright. Um, please like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please do so right now as I take these shots. I gotta do four fucking shots. <laughs> this movie face up. Cheers. <laughs> and go. so drunk right now. Okay, so look, y'all. Um, <laughs> Alright, I will see you all in the next episode, so until then, TTFN. I am going to be so sick. God damn this movie.